No, it's no, been no. surreal, man. You know what? Let's it's save it. Let's save it, man. We already bloody got so many things out the way <laughs> on the flipping phone conversation. Now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna have to come up with a way, <laughs> like I'm fishing uh, it out of you. Lead it in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Four, channel four style. <laughs> Tell us about. Douche. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I think really we were created in different tribes and nations so that we, we may get to know one another. Mashallah, brother! Right, Asalaamu Alaikum, guys, and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Britain's got talent. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I'm saying that Britain's got talent is quite possibly one of the most popular shows when it comes to British television. Now, Nabil Abdul Rashid is an Orthodox Muslim and a hilarious stand up comedian from South London. He delivered an amazing initial performance that got him the golden buzzer from Alicia Dixon that immediately fast tracks the contestant to the semi final. And even on that initial performance that he did, he unashamedly proclaimed his faith I am a Muslim, which is something. I'm not gonna lie, that's not the reaction I was expecting. The fact that he was from South London. South London! And mashallah, he got an amazing response from the people. And some of you probably noticed, even when Alicia Dixon came in for the hug, you could see, you could see the restraint on his face. And some people were even asking as to why he didn't hug her back, because let's face it, she's Alicia Dixon. But of course, that's where his faith came into play. But a few days ago, I would say on a Friday, I think his semi-final performance got aired and mashallah, he was talking about racism and he was talking about his faith as well. Look at him doing jokes about being black and Muslim, right? If a white non-Muslim did that, it would be racist. <laughs> and the way mashallah, he was able to intertwine everything in a clever, comedic, and I would say very creative way. I'm not trying to be racist, right? But these Somalians, these Indians, these Bangladeshis and Nigerians need to go back to Pakistan. <laughs> I had to reach out to my bro and celebrate his performance because let's face it, when it comes to the media, they try to put forward this whole liberal Muslim perspective. So for him to come from an orthodox background, and bear in mind, he's also been on the BBC. It was, mashallah, a breath of fresh air and he really blew me away. Nabil, you're in the final of Britain's Got Talent 2020. And as a fellow creative, I had to reach out and show my brother some love. And as a surprise to you guys, I've got Nabil Abdul Rashid joining me right here in obviously the online space. So my bro, how is it going? How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, man. Can't complain. Uh, it's been uh, surreal. It's been, uh, it's been quite mad. But Alhamdulillah, in all circumstances. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. I know because we spoke on the phone before as well, you've got loads of people vying for your attention you got all these interviews lined up but of course you had to come to you know the let's face it the big show smile to jenna you know what i'm saying like this this is the gateway yeah. isn't it you know it's, I, i'm glad that you found the space to you know, <laughs> uh... i love uh, it bro <laughs> uh, these are the moments that make or break my career so it's very important <laughs> you know i'm saying bro but I, I have to say, bro, I was, I was a bit disappointed, you know, a few of the jokes, you know, you've got to give credit to the OGs, you know what I'm saying? You, bro, of you course, can't man. be doing this. I get the fact that you're... <laughs> Honestly, man, I, my entire act, I, stole, I even stole my name, you know, <laughs> uh, everything. Bro, you know... You know it's funny you say that because there's people, you know, there's people coming to say, oh, he took that joke from... And like, I know for a fact that these guys don't have any, any of this, none of the stuff I'm doing is stuff that these guys have done. But mm. the fact that it's me looking the way I do talking about Islam, they have to try and make it out that I've taken it from a brown comic. Because normally when someone's talking about Islam on stage, you know, it, it's not this package that's delivering it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's quite funny. You know, I, I won't be surprised if somebody comes forward and tries to claim, yeah, Inspired, anyway. Bro, that's standard, yeah, isn't good. it? Like you, you delivered a knockout performance. Naturally, you're gonna get people that are going to kind of try and water it down or yeah. try to take that away from you. Be but bro, yeah. <laughs> but bro, the the fact that you went there, 
you you spoke about things that are relevant you made it funny and bro that's it's, it's a career risking thing and that's one of the things that i noticed bro you pretty much got unanimously voted yeah other than you know amanda holden but let's face it you know what i'm saying <laughs> Yes, to be fair, I think she actually would have voted for me and she just said that to make the other guy feel good. Yeah. Uh, but that's my theory because, you know, I'm doing her radio show tomorrow. So it's like if she's not a fan, then. Okay. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. But bro, I mean... one, one of the things that I noticed all of them said was the fact that, what is it? He took risks. Yeah. And flipping David Walliams. Even he said that he resonated with you as well, my bro. That, uh, uh, that kind of worried me, if you ask me. But yeah, <laughs> when he, he was saying that, uh, he felt connected to the next. Like, I'm like, this guy ain't talking about me. Yeah. And then he said my name. I was like, oh, you know. Bro, I was watching your face, bro. Literally, before her thing, uh, I, I, I was like, let me see, because ITV's got it on their channel. Bro, I saw your face. You were like, first time they mentioned Nabil Abdul Rashid, you were like, that was the David Williams one. Then again, bro, tell us what was going through your mind when your name came up first time, then second time, and then flipping the third time, bro. Because I... I'll do one better. So um, a lot of people who don't know me personally will know my background, but like I'm naturally a very anxious person. Like there's a long running joke my friends have that you can't sneak up on the bill. Right, because it's almost impossible to catch me by so I'm very prang, like I'm always, you know, and I always calculate things in my head. I, I, I have severe anxiety, so I'm always whoa, 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 like, anxiety. You're a stand up comedian, my bro. Yeah, I only took it up as a means to learn to cope with it. No way, uh, but I think, yeah, but I think that's probably you know how it is, man. Um, you know, comedy is just my outlet. It, it helps me deal with my anxiety and it helps me deal with my temper because I've got a very bad temper as well, so, uh, believe it or not. So, um, and I think, I mean, I still do, but I've learned to control it more over the years. I've and I think, more patient. I, I think our conversation uh, we were having on the phone, I think you mentioned you had a stutter as well. Is, is, is... Yeah, yeah, I used to, as a kid, I used to stutter. Uh, all my, um, I have two older brothers, they all stutter, my dad stutters, and like my dad learned to control it. My older brothers have controlled theirs. Um, one of them has it a bit bad, but he also has, we all have the temper. We all have the stammer. And when I start to get angry, I actually start to lose the ability to speak. Mm. Like, yeah, it just turns to, you know, or like when I get nervous or whatever, my speech gets affected. Um, so I, I, from a young age, my parents actually got me involved in things like uh, arts, martial arts, sports, performing arts, things like that. Because as a kid, like, you know, I stuttered, I was anxious, I had ADHD, um, you know, all this stuff um, when I was little. And like my, my parents never got me dedicated for it. They were like, you know, take up sports, play video games, do art, you know. And that's why like a lot of people, don't, people who follow me will know, like I have other talents outside of comedy. Like I'm a really good cook. I think I'm a better cook than I am a comedian. Um, but like it's because I, I've, I've had to have an outlet for my anxiety to help me calm myself wow. so like um, comedy is one of many things that I do to help me deal I, I hate crowds bro I hate crowds um, when numbers I don't recognize call my phone I start getting angry like who's this person called like, <laughs> it, it, I, it feels like my space is being invaded yeah you know? and, uh, wow. and I joke on it because that's how I keep myself calm when things irritate me so stand up was literally I just took it up as you know a means oh, to you know that's mega inspirational. So you're afraid of something, yeah, you, you you're anxious, you you're afraid of crowds, and you've taken on something that is literally you're at loggerheads with your with with your fears on a daily basis. And bro, because we spoke on the phone as well, that I think that makes your performance even more special. The fact that you were able to take not only your own burdens, my bro, but the burdens of the masses that need people to represent them. And mashallah, bro, I don't mean to keep praising you. Like we had the thing on the phone, but I, I, I have to put this out there, bro. Like you flipping smashed it. What are you, bro, you win or you lose, bro, you've definitely won. Like there is no lose at this point. I you know think, what I'm saying? Um, exactly. You know, 
Hundreds. Like the whole aim when I went to do it, the whole aim was like, look, if I can get to the final, that would be amazing. Mm. Right. So I I genuinely didn't think that I would win my round. I thought that I would go through to you know the people's vote and then they would vote me through. Maybe mm. I thought maybe the nurse would go through. And people who like do odds and talk about who's most likely to win, I'm a massive underdog. Or well, I was until the semifinal performance because yeah. my golden buzzer video that people saw is actually quite edited you don't see how well i did on the day that i did that like so the video you see is two minutes i was probably mm. on stage for eight or nine minutes and i was only on stage for that long because i kept on getting standing ovations and i would tell the audience to sit down no way i could take the screenshot so you know i'm not lying the level is you were lucky the people backstage who interview other acts had to stop interviews because the crowd was making too much noise when I was on. Bro, but what, what was getting the standing ovations? Do you remember the trend of the points? The, it's jokes about things like Brexit, Islamophobia, you know, the same sort of stuff, like the same sort of stuff, you know? Yeah. I, talk, I talk about what I see. I don't, mm. tell, I don't just tell you jokes. I tell the truth. Yeah. And I mean, you've known, you've, you've known me for a while. I'm from South, you're from South. Yeah. You know, we worked we together have before once with Abu Bakr yeah. as well, Rota to Yeah, yeah. So you know the environments that I've been in and the things that we've come up seeing around this neck of the woods. So for me, I can't go on stage and do like I don't want to disrespect what other comedians do, but I can't go on stage and do like Mickey Mouse. But I talk about realness, you know, because yeah. that's you know, and it's funny because. Nobody would have thought the kind of things I talk about would get allowed on Britain's Got Talent. Yeah, a hundred. You know, nobody... A hundred, bro. I was like, this guy's like, got, got a this, like, the stuff that I'm going to do for the, for the final. Like, if you think the semi-final was bad, you know. And it's like, but the, I, I think the thing that, uh, something I've learned over the years is Tawakun, you know. And knowing that good will always come if it's destined to you. So, like when I I signed up to do Brinsley Talent, the the I, I remember asking on my Facebook, I asked, "What do you think would happen if someone like me did Brinsley Got Talent?" And people were posting like pictures of terrorism, police, and no way. Maybe, they're like, "Oh, they would never have you on on Brinsley Got Talent." I was like, "Yeah, okay." How long ago was this? This was early in the year. Damn. Like, what do you guys think would happen if I did Brinsley Got Talent? Just before I went and did the audition, I even asked comedians, I was like, what do you think about Brins Got Talent? Like, you, Brins Got Talent, ha, 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 whatever. Because mm. even among comedians, I'm known for being, you know how, like, in rap music, there's hardcore MCs, like, you know, low-key, for example, is a rapper that talks about Palestine and all this stuff. Uh, okay. He's not somebody that performs for a nightclub audience or whatever. So low I'm key, seeing... Akala, like, those types, yeah. Yeah. I'm seen as that in comedy. I'm seen as a hardcore, underground, Activist. not mainstream. Yeah. Type you know? Yeah. So it's like, people are like, how could someone like you do BGT? And I'm like, okay, we'll see. Mm. And I went and I did it. And obviously, COVID, the riots and all these things have happened. And it's made the need or, or the demand for what I do even bigger, I think. And, um, you I think know. We need to put it out there that your semi-final was actually recorded five weeks ago, isn't it? Yeah, my semi-final was recorded on the 5th of September, I think. That's nuts. So, and I think like, we were discussing how well it's aged and how really... Yeah, it, this, is, yeah this, is, this is... You know, I'm, I'm not... I can't tell you what Allah's plan is, but it's very clear that there's almost something... You know, it, it, what are the odds? Like, mm. it's almost like... Uh, I predicted things. Mm -hmm. It's almost like I predicted things in, in what has come out now. And it's, you know, and that's why I'm glad that I did it because I almost didn't do it, you know. And even when I went on stage for my audition, because like, like everyone in the arts, I have my haters, you know, I'm sure there's going to be a couple commenting under this video. Standard, you know? bro. <laughs> yeah, with, with, with uh, no picture and a number <laughs> next to their name. You know them ones? Yeah, I slurpy three, underscore one, eight, seven, one six, two, five. three in it. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, you know, I already had a career before I went on BGT. I was actually doing not too bad, right? But it's like, I was, I realized that if I do badly and I make myself look like an idiot, I'm throwing the career I have away. Mm. 
and I'm going to give these people so much fuel to right. attack me with. And like, with, you know, because I represent so many communities, because most comedians only do white shows or only do black shows, only do Muslim shows, only do Asian. I do everything. I've always been that guy that does all kinds of audiences. So I'm like, that's so many different groups of people that might watch and laugh at me if I don't do well. And alhamdulillah, and it couldn't, couldn't have gone better, I don't think. That's so true, bro. That's, that's 100% and that's so true. But another thing um, we were discussing beforehand as well, um, any famous interactions that you've had since you've gone on the show other than flipping Anton Deck and, <laughs> and, and David Williams? Man, like, uh, even right now on Twitter, like, people, like, I had Frankie Boyle tweeting at me. Ooh, I had, Frankie. Yeah, yeah. And he, he's a comic I've always liked. We have a, a lot heavyweight. of similarities. Yeah, you know, um, Frankie Boyle tweeted at me. Um, a few, like, Baroness Worsi, mm. as, um, you know, uh, and then there's that sister, the B- Bengali sister, I think, in the Labour Party. Oh, okay. Literally tweeted at me. Um, I'm a big fan of like The Walking Dead, and Dave tweeted. You're talking about Boris Johnson. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can use that in the final, well, bro. <laughs> no, I'm alright. <laughs> oh. Um. So the um, the <laughs> uh, the cast, the mem- cast members of films that I watch, have been retweeting me. Oh, nice. You know, big agents and all kinds like, you know, Krishna and Guru Murphy of Channel 4. And, you know, I've always been that guy that the mainstream hasn't really noticed. Yeah. So it's a bit weird to have. It almost feels like all the recognition I never got all these years from the mainstream is now, you know, it's amazing. It's surreal to see, you know. And, and you know um, what, bro? You know, you know what it also shows? It shows that as, a, as an Orthodox community, we normally just say oh the day of judgment is coming or the mahdi will be coming soon so you know what i'm saying just just kind of wait for that time and the more we kind of just close off in our boxes the more we're kind of harboring this creativity this 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 wisdom this spirituality and 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 just look someone like yourself that's mashallah harboring all these internal battles but the fact that you've kind of you know just stepped on it for a short while and just put yourself out there like you said risked it and look at the ripples that you've sent yeah imagine if others mashallah go out of their comfort zones and actually you know show the world their talents don't you think bro that we've got so much to give yeah we do and that's the thing you know it, it, i was discussing this and some people might not like that i say this but not only do muslims um stifle do we stifle our own progress in many ways we almost use islam as an excuse for mediocrity, you know? Mm. So like a Muslim does business. If you are a Muslim doing business with another Muslim, that becomes the excuse for them not to pay you on time, mm. not to get the invoices done properly, yeah. not to have things like, you know, you, you, go to, you, do to, you go to Muslim events and everybody's a charity, right? Yeah, because yeah. then that, that's the excuse for, do you see what I'm saying? Oh, everybody wants a discount. I've, I've, Every- I felt that. I felt that and experienced that myself as well. Yeah, you know, it, it's your videographer, your, uh, your, 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 uh, whatever it is you do. The worst business you can ever do is with your own people, Muslims still. And, and like, it's the same thing. We'll have a comedy night or we'll have a, some kind of event and it's poorly organized. And it's always, it's not that the money isn't there. It's not that the talent isn't there. But it's like, oh, brother, subhanAllah, make excuses. And we just don't do things properly. Mm. But then there's so many people within the community that are outstanding, you know. But because that spirit of excellence isn't there, it's denied. A lot of people don't then push and try their best to do their best because, they, you know, you look at, look, just, I mean, just look at our TV channels that are catered to most. Look at how poorly run they are. No one watches look, them, bro. They no all watch Smile to Gender. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I'm getting tired of all these views. Bro, you got to do something about it, man. <laughs> all these people... Nah, it's, it's too much, bro. Like, they need to I mean, make some of the viewers. Go to a Muslim comedy show where I'm not performing. And 
<laughs> the only time that the shows go well is when they get non-practicing Muslims to come and perform. Mm. Mm. Yeah. If you look at even Muslims, it's like there's this constant battle. To, like even now, people have made takfir on me for being on BGT. Um, people have come out and said, "Oh, we shouldn't aspire to entertain the kufar, the non-Muslim." And I'm like, "But mate, you drive them home after they've come out of the pub." Bro, it's not even that. It's you know, like every single thing. If we take the attitude, apply it to everything else. But bro, you heal them when they're sick. Mm. But because I make them laugh, there's some wrong with me. You sell them food. Bro, it's you, you sell them what? alcohol. Bro, you know? <laughs> even bro, even all that to the side, yeah. That's those you sorts of debates here. are never ending, bro. Our yeah. youth, yeah. They they we talk big, bro, in the masjids, but they uh, they have no role model. They have no kind of exemplars in society. They, bro. I mean, what, Prophet Muhammad is a role model, but yeah, they're watching. No, of course, of course, bro. The Prophet yeah. Muhammad is their role model, and he he should be their role model. But let's let's be realistic, mm. my bro. Like, yeah, that's yeah. it's something that is said. And it's it's like a a thing that should be done, but it's not. Done. You know what I'm saying, it's, my it's bro? It's like you know, you know, like we're quick to take things away. Yeah. Like you will tell the sister, don't be a makeup artist, don't be a this, don't be a that. But you wouldn't encourage her to do something else. Yeah. Right. You wouldn't encourage her to be an alima. You won't encourage. You will tell the brother, don't rap, but you won't tell him what he should do. Like, yeah, literally, you must give an alternative, in it. Yeah. And and the thing what you've media. done, my bro, is. Mm. You're on stage, you're not singing, you're not dancing, bro. You're talking, my bro, and you're talking facts and using humor. You know what I'm saying? It's real talk. It's you know what? And this this is this is the main thing that I wanted to get to, yeah, which is my bro, what he did was he spoke about everything and the way he tied it up around the Quran ayah that Allah has sent us to get to know each other. Yeah, he sent us, you know. Um, as tribes and as groups so that we can get to know each other and the way you tied it up bro it was <laughs> i would even say it was a it was a glorified tafsir session on flip <laughs> on channel three bro but yeah, it's done get yourself refuted. <laughs> <laughs> bro but it's done in the and that's the thing it's hikmah and that's what it is invite all to the way of thy lord with beautiful preaching and and that's what it was. It was beautiful preaching. You used wisdom. You didn't. You don't have to bang people over the head with the Islam thing. Yeah, our actions should speak louder than our words. And the way yeah. we do it, you don't have to say, "Oh, it's quoted in this ayah and this and that." Um, you really. being there, you saying you're a Muslim, you exemplifying that, bro. I think that in itself is an act that a lot of people will be watching. It's inspirational, hundred percent. We should have role models like the Sahaba, like the Prophet. But let's let's be realistic. You and me, bro, we're in South. We know what time it is. Yeah, we know yeah. the youth, bro. We go out and we see how much dawah is needed. And so, the Muslim youth are the worst. The Muslim youth are the worst. Like if you get, um, if you're dealing with a gang member, you better pray it's not a Muslim gang member. Mm. You know, like the, the, what our youth are doing. And you know the problem is this, right? We don't have a culture of pragmatism here in the UK among Muslims. You don't have a culture of pragmatism. I don't care what sect you belong to. Every sect does this. Every group does this where they say things like, for example, oh, we don't need this because Islam. Would. But then it's like, okay, how are you going to practically give that? So like, we'll say things like, there's no racism in Islam. So don't even discuss racism. Mm. But then the worst spaces to be a minority is in Muslim spaces. We don't have sexism. Women have rights in Islam. Have you ever spoken to a Muslim sister and asked her what her experiences are mm. within those circles, within those spheres? And I'm not saying that it's Islam's fault. Of course not. But what it is, is we are lacking because rather than talk about what is, we talk about what should be. Mm. There should be no racism in our sp spaces. There should be no people doing dodgy dealings and stealing money. I mean, we've got people, Muslims in, in, in big charities doing fraud. Mad, bro. You know, we've got all this stuff happening and it shouldn't be happening. You know, and the, the, what we do is we stick our head in the sand and say, oh, we, we don't, you don't need to audit subhanAllah where a Muslim charity make excuse for your brother. We just don't like to deal with the reality of problems that are right in front of us. And you know what? In a way, I think that's the reason why we're so charitable. 
Because rather than have a pragmatic way to fix a problem, we just want to throw money at it and yeah. hope it disappears. Want to patch it up with the plaster, isn't it? But bro, it under the rug. coming coming back to the point, yeah, mm. the final. <laughs> bro, you got me gassed about the final, bro. What can you tell us? The little tidbits. I don't want you to give away the surprises and that. But what can we expect in the final? And bro, make sure you're doing your three calls there. Yeah? And your item kursi, you know what I'm saying? You, you're going to get a lot of that evil eye, bro. Yeah, and you know, before I go on stage, I always say, Allahumma kfini him bimashita. Suffice me Allah against all of them. But like what, um, oh, well, I made, if you're on Twitter, you see, I made uh, a promise. I said, I will not discuss racism or Islamophobia on my final if in the next week nobody is racist or Islamophobic to me. <laughs> Okay, I guess we're expecting a lot. <laughs> Hopefully. Come on, bro. <laughs> we're just speaking about pragmatism, yeah? <laughs> I can only talk about my experiences, man. Bro, so, one, yeah. one, one thing I wanted to ask as well, yeah, as, as, as a fellow writer, is it stuff that you've got? Are you now going back to your diaries and your notepads that you've got? Or is it stuff that you're like, okay, let me kind of, what, what's your process on, on, on writing and getting the content for the semis and for the final? It's a combination of old and new. Um, I mean, the stuff you saw at the semifinal, I mean, it hit hard. I'd say 95% of that was, I came up with a week after lockdown ended. Yeah, a week after lockdown ended, I came up, that's when, I'd say 95% of the stuff that I did on stage, um, I came up with it. Everything is pretty much to do with lockdown. Wow. Uh, it was to do with, I mean, if you listen to this, I talked about the changes to my life since mm. the golden buzzer. Attitudes towards my um, golden buzzer video coming out. Um, you know, uh, what else? Yeah, that that's literally all I talked about. In, uh, yeah, bro, some of the references they, they were they were brilliant. I think. Um, big oh yeah, and the whole thing Wiley. Yeah. yeah, these were things that happened a week or so after lockdown, and that's you know. How do you, um, bro? What's your, what's your process on making sure, like, if a joke works? Let's just say you got three, four jokes. How do you know which one to put down and say that's what I'm going with? Um, trial and error. I mean, I've been doing this for 11 years now. So th there's also, I think, it's just like when you make your videos, you probably have an, a knack for understanding. It's kind of like how a boxer knows the best time to take a shot and knock someone out. Um, you know, you, you just know, right? So you don't um, trial it with friends, yeah? No, I mean, I, I perform at comedy clubs and stuff, uh, mm. theatres and things like that. So I do test it out. But I mean, even then... By the time I go on stage, I've already got an idea what I want to do. Um, and I think because, uh, I mean, there's ways around it, but it's too long to explain here. Of course. But I think once you, you know, in comedy, we have a saying that it takes five years to find your voice. So I, I, I think I've been doing this long enough now, and I've got enough experience with different types of audiences that I know my voice. I know what works for me. Um, I, know, I have my own unique style. Um, and yeah, I just know when some when a joke comes, I'm like, yeah, that's 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 something that would work for me. I know how I would do that. I mean, because a lot of the stuff I did, if someone else, that's the thing about stand up, it's not like telling a not not joke. Someone else could take my joke and try and do it, and it would not work. I mean, you've yeah. seen it all the time. Yeah. Where somebody watches stand up and oh, you know the joke, he said something, and that he looks like big nasty. What? You know, but the way I did it is um you know there's so many elements to it and that yeah. comes from experience 100 it's a whole art form a lot of people don't realize comedy is an art form yeah until they try it bro it was you know? it was an entire narrative like you could see certain bits were woven together even the supermarket thing the way you kind of bought it bought, bought it in multiple yeah. times how you kind of the, the big nasty thing how not only you had it but then you you, you actually ended with it it was many of it was a roller coaster ride like you take Oh. Is he going to apologize? Is he kind of aware of the diversity thing? Oh crap, he's ending with a big nasty joke. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. And, and I like that. I, you know, in, in comedy, we call the ending a callback. 
and yeah, again, that that's a very it's a trick of the trade that you learn. Um, you know, also even how like you can't joke as a stand up if you're a really good stand up, you have to make people forget that you're telling jokes and then hit them with the joke. Mm. Again, I like to use boxing because I I boxed since I was a kid. Um, because like packing I'm stuff away in that and using cello tape and. It's, those big boxes. So, as, <laughs> oh. you know, it's, it's almost the same effect of uh, blinding someone with a jab before you throw a cross. You make them forget about the big, strong hand mm. with your weaker hand, and then you land. Or you make them think the punch is going from one place, and you land with another. And yeah, it's the same yeah. thing with comedy, which is why the end of a joke is called a punchline. Um, the best punchlines are just like the best punches. You don't see them coming. So, um, you know, the, the misdirection, all this kind of stuff. It's, it's amazing. I, comedy, I love comedy, man. It's an art form. Um, one of my favorite comedians is Dave Chappelle. And Legend. Yeah, I love his, you know, and I, what I love most about him is how he's just himself on stage and he's comfortable. Mm-hmm. Especially you know, now. Just, yeah, <laughs> now he just bro. doesn't care. <laughs> and, and, you know. That, and, but you can't afford to do that, I mean, yeah. Don't go on stage flipping the air, guys. Salam to be Allah. honest, I think I'm at my best when I don't care. Like when I was on stage, uh, I was anxious before I go on stage. But once I started performing, I, was, I think maybe the because there's no the one world. there apart from three people, a bunch of squeeze, bro. <laughs> I, I was more comfortable when there was 3,000 people in front of me. Yeah. It's, uh, the catharsis of performing on stage is something that I can never explain to someone mm. until they try it for themselves. Waiting backstage is the worst feeling in the world, oh, knowing that you have right. to go on and, uh, and to take, because like someone walks up to you and says, and don't think I'm a weirdo, my kids leave these lying around. And, too late, bro. Uh, playing with them is uh, satisfying. I can understand why my two-year-old does it. But um, waiting backstage, knowing that you're on next is the most harrowing feeling in the world. Mm. But being on stage and doing your thing is... Honestly, it's amazing. It's that way, isn't it? I think that's what Uber and London Transport have done. They that's why they've got the you know the your bus will be there after two minutes, after five yeah. minutes. And Uber's telling you, oh your your driver's taking a left turn. He's at McDonald's getting a Big Mac, and he'll be around. Yep. Minutes, and he just run out, run over a grand. Man is impatient. <laughs> think about this, right? Impatience and laziness are the two things that have caused the most development in mankind. Every mm. technological advancement we have. It's just to make life easier. Wow. That's true, bro. You're spinning some bars right there. Bro, yeah. I have to say, feel free to use any of my content. Uh, I know you're going to be using it anyway. But another thing that I'm actually thinking is, um, it's, it's actually what David Williams said, that he sees a future for you. And I kind of, the reason why I, I took that to heart was, because certain people in Britain's got talent. Yeah, bro, inshallah, you're going to smash it. Yeah, you're going to win. But even certain people that are in semifinals have gone on to, to make certain, you know, like leaps and bounds in their, in, in their careers. And especially with David Williams, like, did he speak to you? Was there some kind of talking backstage? Or was it like they went into their room and they were like, go and do one, mate? It went stuff. their way. We went ours. Um, oh. I've not even seen Alicia Dixon apart from when you see me seeing her. You know, mm-hmm. so like when when he was talking, I had no clue he was gonna choose me, but as soon as he chose me, I knew that I would win because mm. I was like, if he's chosen me, at least yeah. I will probably choose. Because he's know. he's a comedian, isn't it? Like comedian knows yeah. a comedian. So now yeah, that, that might be it. Yeah, that that might be it. Or maybe I was just really good. <laughs> <laughs> were you saying that when you were back home in the number two bus? <laughs> <laughs> they got me an Addison Lee. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mashallah. Hey, bro. I'm so happy for you, bro. bro. Like, honestly. Bro. Honestly, bro. When I, when I saw that, I was actually watching it in the morning uh, on, on Twitter and I was just seeing the, the, the retweets and that. And, bro, honestly, the, the way you killed it and that. Mashallah. But I want to say um, that there's obviously there's, there's always that tussle that comes. And I'm going to end with this, inshallah. I'm not going to keep you that long. That, that thing inside where it's like, should I go that way? Should I go this way? But for you, you have taken every step of the way. You've stuck to what 
is true to you and what you believe in. Yeah. Now, naturally, somebody that sees the potential of glitz and glamour, they want to kind of dial it down. They want to kind of change who they are. Why do you feel that will happen to you or why you think it won't happen to you? And what do you think will keep you grounded in, in the future that lies ahead? I mean, I'm too far gone in the way I am now to change, bro. Um, mm. I'm not a kid. And I've already turned down, like, I've turned down so many things that people don't know about that would have been great for my career. But I turned it down because of my beliefs. And I'm not saying I'm this perfect Muslim or this perfect guy. I'm not, as I'm sure, again, some of the people commenting will be quick to say, but I'm not, I've made mistakes. I'm not the nicest guy in the world. You know, nobody can be perfect. Right? Yeah. Um, but I know one thing about me, and it's that I'm headstrong. I refuse to... Uh, change I've stood like you know again the some of the situations I've been in before comedy like you know in in other situations you understand what I'm talking about yeah 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 in those situations I didn't fold so is it now that I'm gonna fold mm. so and also you know the thing about Islam is that it's a practical religion it's not a religion where we believe in superhuman people we believe in real men who had real problems and Ayub had resolve. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had resolve. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam had resolve. What am I facing really that's equal to what they went through that would mm. make me change? Nothing. For 11 years, I've not had the recognition that I feel I deserve because I stuck to my guns. And now the same thing that got doors closed in my face made me trend on Twitter, made all the, these doors open for me. So I just feel that Allah has already told us with hardship comes ease. That's mm. all the confirmation I need that I'm doing the right thing. SubhanAllah. And bro, with the final coming up, how do we support you? What's, what's the procedure? Like, I, I don't watch Britain's Got Talent. I'm sure many people don't, but we want to support our brother in, in what he's doing. How do we do that? Well, um, those who, who are that way inclined, if they can download the app, because I know our people, black people, and up on it one day, they don't like to spend money. They get a bit conjuice, you know, but um, <laughs> all you have to do is download the app uh, on your phone and um, it gives you five free votes, right? And you just, on the day, if you feel that I should win, vote for me. Um, it's as simple as that. Which day is this? Uh, it's going to be on the 10th of October so that's next Saturday or this coming Saturday mm -hmm. and um, yeah we only have a small window of time to vote so I just hope that um, you know whoever is watching I hope that you guys uh, you oh, it's, know, a no -brainer. Vote. it's a no-brainer my bro I'm gonna try banging you making history if I win come on you know come on bro so inshallah we're gonna try bank bang this video out today and then Tomorrow, obviously, you've got your uh, interviews with, you know, the small fish like ITV and, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, scum, scum on the phone, man. You know what I'm saying? The Let's reserve that for the Daily Mail and the, <laughs> and the Daily Star <laughs> and the Sun. <laughs> I think you already yeah. flipped smashed them. I think you flipped called them, uh, was it, uh, toilet paper. <laughs> bro, you, you asked for it, bro. They, they're coming for you. <laughs> Oddly enough, they've all written nice things about me, I guess. I guess I guess that's now, gonna change now. <laughs> no, literally after my performance, they all wrote nice stuff about me. So I guess they all like, hey, he's not talking about us. He's talking about that paper. Ah, you know, okay. We'll see. Uh, it's been interesting. It's been interesting. Bro, honestly, I actually wanted to keep this short as possible, but there's so much that we can talk about, bro. Inshallah, when you win, let's touch base again, and then let's uh, let's do a longer session. But this this week, I just wanted to kind of. Um, celebrate you as a person celebrate just um the performance that you've done so far i'm sure bro and i'm gonna pray for you my bro and i invite the viewers to do so may allah protect you from the evil eye may allah uh, protect you from uh, you know the, the evil whisperings and and just may allah keep your uh, surroundings and your family steadfast that they can support you during this key important time may allah bless your kids i know you're um mm -hmm. putting them to Bed, uh, uh, and inshallah bro may Allah increase you and yeah man i'm mega excited for you uh, i'm mega happy for you my bro and uh, let's let's touch base again okay. okay guys 
Inshallah, you guys benefited from that. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.